Hello, everybody. Welcome back to uh, our Solon TV podcast titled Under the Skin. We have the one and only Jack Rudy in the building. Mr. Flox, thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Yes, sir. I really do appreciate sure. you guys. Glad to my, be here. My business partner, Ryan Smith, a.k.a. Color Crimes. Hey. In the building. In the building. Hey, you know, uh, yes, I just want to first ask you, when did color become a crime? Uh, when I was trying to think of a website that was easy to remember. Oh, cool. You know, that was, simple. What about you guys? Where did where did the name Flocks come from and, and Jack from way back? Oh, I got a good one, but let's let's let Flocks go first. Mine's easy. I'm skinny. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. It. So I've so always it's been always been so in other words, it's a takeoff on flaco, which means skinny in Spanish. Of uh, 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 and I think that's sort of slangish. Yeah. But but mine's uh, kind of interesting. I got mine in. Um, uh, it, it was it was courtesy of of Juan Diaz, one of the three Diaz brothers. Used to come in the East LA shop, the first shop. And he would say the same thing all the time, like, "Oh, Rale, Jack from way back. He's older than baseball. Why he knew Moby Dick when he was just a sardine." And I would always laugh at that. And it was like, "That's ah, great." But I thought, "Oh, I like the way Jack from way back sounds. I like the rhyme of that." I go, "But Holmes, don't you think that would be a little more?" suitable, you know, for a veteran or somebody has been around. I'll, he goes, oh, don't worry, Holmes, you'll grow into it. Specializing in lettering and tattooing, it seems like the perfect style for conventions, right? Sure. And, and Norm was saying, he's like, I don't even take appointments, which I think is cool too, like it used to be, so people can actually get tattooed by you. But um, Walk-ups. Right. I get it, you know, because I've done a lot of conventions where I didn't have any appointments. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go and see what happens. Yeah. And it always turns out okay. Sometimes it turns out real okay. Yeah. Cool if there was like a like a rule, you know, like don't make appointments, walk ins for everybody. I'd be yeah, if I got a convention to that would, that the would risk be cool. of having an all no one booked yeah. Uh, yeah. show. That'd that would be awesome. That would be cool. That would be really cool to see what happened. Like, was there a so time when it was like that? Yeah. Before but, I mean the people internet. Yeah. Before the internet? Sure. Oh, yeah. when did you decide that you wanted a tattoo? How'd that happen? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I put, I put my first uh, masterpiece on right here 50 years ago. Let me turn this up for you. Um, right here, okay? And, and uh, you know, this, is, this was in 1969, so this really was 50 years ago. And, uh, but see, you know, my, my uh, attraction to tattooing was when I was a little kid. I didn't even know what they were. But I remember being at the Pike, you know, when I was five years old and probably in front of Burt Grimm's shop. You know, uh, it was some shop down there, one of them, that, that had a bunch of photos of, like, you know, guys, sailors mostly, with, like, big chest eagle or, you know, whatever it was. Right now. And I didn't, I had no idea. And it was like after meeting Charlie several other times, I would go, like, when I got a chance to go down there and hang out, you know, I would. When I got a station in Barstow, out in the desert, you know, you know, I said, you know, I think it would be a really good place to open up a tattoo shop. Where? And he goes... I said, uh, East L.A., homes between the bikers, lowriders, cholos, and, you know, everybody over over on that side of town, man, that'd be fucking, I think that'd be a great fucking spot. And he just, man, he just, he just looked so amazed at, at you know, what, what I, he goes, man, I've been thinking the same thing. I've been thinking the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, fuck up. yeah, homes. And, and he goes, yeah, I'm going to open up a shop over there, man. And then he's like, he's, how'd you like to come work for me? Well, shit, he didn't have to ask me twice. Okay, I've, I've got this book, and uh, it, it's derived from the 13 big pages that I did um, that took me over a year to draw all this stuff. It's like 190 words and phrases, and that's volume one. That's all my stuff, and the book is 49 pages, and it's 100 and a half, and, and people can get it from me. Basically, that's the only way. Uh, actually, uh, Wendy Belzell has a couple. Of books, but it's just that's it. Just just me and her at, at the moment. Uh, but there's also a a volume two that's coming out. That's going to be more of my stuff, and then it's going to be a lot of other uh, mostly friends uh, that are artists that are good lettering mofos like Flox here. And uh, among others, you know, Mr. Cartoon, O.G. Abel, uh, Calm One, uh, Norm, Weto. Uh, Chavo, the list goes on and on. I've got a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of badass lettering mofos. Uh, so, and then with my stuff too. So that volume two is going to be out in uh, maybe a month or so. We'll see. All right, man. Well, hey, listen. Cool. You guys can uh, listen to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. 
You can pull it up on uh, on our Soul and TV YouTube channel. Uh, comment in the comments. Let us know who you want to have on here next. Subscribe, like, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Under the Skin, Soul and TV, soulandclothing.com. Later, guys. Thanks for listening.